Hello, my name is Tim Kellis. I'd like to welcome you to an interview with the first couple that I've worked with. I've uh, written a book that I believe solves the marriage problem. It's called Equality, The Quest for the Happy Marriage. And um, this has been, as it turns out, my life journey. I uh, basically grew up relatively poor. My parents raised us on $22,000 a year, put myself through engineering school, spent nine years in the communications equipment industry, went back and got my MBA and landed on Wall Street where I was the first semiconductor analyst to focus on the communications market. And at the peak of the market, I met this girl I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with. And when that relationship ended and we went to a therapist and I realized therapy wasn't helping, I decided to tackle the issue myself. I uh, basically spent 10 months researching 100 books. It's probably one of the most researched books ever written. And uh, then my wife and I moved to Costa Rica where we lived for nine months and there I wrote it. And um, this is actually my first couple that I've got to read it together. And uh, we are discussing with them sort of what, they, what they've learned. And um, the objective here is to solve our, our uh, marriage problem. And hopefully this book will be a big help for you, those of you looking to actually solve your marriage problems. So good luck. As I like to end every uh, presentation, that I make, there's no such thing as a failure who keeps trying. Coasting to the bottom is the only disgrace. Bobby and Lynn here. Um, Lewis uh, just got married a couple months ago. And first off, no, they do not have any problems in their marriage. It's called marriage education. We're trying to help people up front as opposed to waiting until they get divorced. So we've spent the last two months meeting once a week. Uh, they've basically been reading about 50 pages a day, I mean, 50 pages a week. Uh, and then at the end of one week, uh, we, we meet and usually talk for an hour, hour and a half. And uh, we just got done with our, actually, about a half an hour ago with our, our last little session. So. Okay. All right. Well, how has reading the book together and then discussing it with Tim helped you to better understand how to manage your marriage? Well, I think it's pretty well known that marriages aren't easy. So as a newlywed, working with Tim right off the bat has been very beneficial because it kind of enlightens you to problems that may occur and how to handle them should they arise. I guess uh, for my part, it's just thinking about the way we feel and addressing things that maybe other people are going through or things that you know have happened in the past or things we haven't experienced yet. Um, I guess I'd liken it to building the ark before it rains. That's a good uh, way to say it. So what are some of the significant psychological points that you learned? I'd say um, to kind of reflect on your past and to look within and to understand yourself better so that you're better able to handle a, your significant other and to understand why you may react to certain situations and kind of um, understand the transference of the emotion. It might be something from when you were younger or something you learned or an experience and it may, if you're getting frustrated with your significant other, it may not be just because of what's happening there. It might be a whole series of things from your past. So just knowing that and being able to understand that I think helps you be able to hedge off from the beginning the fight that might happen. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I'd say I'd say for me it's just situations where if you're having a misunderstanding or you don't quite you don't quite get why you just can't have a meeting of the minds uh, it's looking back and rewinding uh, things in your life and reassessing certain times or events or relationships whether it be family or past relationships uh, reassessing what happened and, and what you took from that with you and if it's still around if, so it's, sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. And, you know, for me in certain areas, uh, it might have been a patience level that she certainly deserves patience, uh, my patience and my effort, and, um, you know, giving what she's saying the, my full thought, you know, and the respect to finish it. Whereas in the past, I might have come to understand that certain conversations weren't going to go anywhere or. I guess there's a million different things, but you have to make sure that you, you give you know, the one you love a chance to be who they are and a fresh start and uh, keep things from the past that are in the closet or up in the attic. Make sure that they're in the right place, I guess. And all of these ideas are constant throughout the book, so it's helpful. There's examples, there's um, history to draw upon and philosophy, and it's really beneficial to be able to kind of 
go through the whole book from A to Z and learn about different philosophies and how you can apply them to our lives and how we can help prevent fights in the future. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's conflict resolution is really the bottom line here. <laughs> <laughs> what about some significant practical points that you've learned together? Um, well, let me give you an example. Taking out the garbage. That is something where it seems very trivial, insignificant, but from my perspective, it would make me angry because he wouldn't take out the garbage. Well, by understanding and by reading and really looking within, I, was, I realized that it's not just taking out the garbage. I feel like I'm not being respected. And a lot of times, I think there's a larger meaning than what something seems so trivial. He thinks I'm just complaining about him not taking out the garbage, but really, it's more important. I feel disrespected and he's not trying to work together and you know keep the place together. So now, by going over these points, he takes out the garbage. Well, I, I'm not perfect at it yet. I think the, the main thing was for her to understand that I'm not doing it to like make her mad, mad or I'm not fighting her on it. Like oh, just because you you know mentioned or bring it up or asked me to doesn't that's not why I didn't do it. It's the way my mind works. Sometimes it's non-linear. I jump around. I, I genuinely forget, you know. And and <laughs> it's not <laughs> something that I, for some I don't have the habit. Um, I don't know whether it's because I had um, a live-in maid when I was young. So there's certain things like laundry and other things that I do very well. But I realized that I was I, I needed some sort of prompting and. You know, it's not such a huge thing, but it meant something to her, and I wanted her to understand that it just genuinely it skipped my mind. And, and when I remember to do it, I'm happy to do it. And but. he's very thoughtful. If he thinks, like when we took it to the place where I felt like I wasn't being respected, he that triggers something in his mind more than you're not taking out the garbage. Like he, he really was like, wow, she doesn't feel like she, I'm respecting her. It, you know, it's deeper than just mm -hmm. that. So he's taking out the garbage now. It's great. And so it's just. You miss like this, and it's something small, and <laughs> you just look at each other like, I don't know what to say for myself. At least. It, it's but called empathy, actually. If you want to know the answer, I mean, that's that's what you're trying to learn is just understand your partner's perspective. Yes, I, I love the psychological part of it. You know, it's understanding human behavior mm -hmm. all around. Interesting. Can you give us some real life examples of how this has helped you deal with disagreements, which are Certainly a part of most marriages. Yeah, there's uh, there's one, uh, and this is uh, this is yeah. <laughs> there's there's two, there's three or four, there's ten. Uh, yeah, it's like a pick pick one or two. Um, yeah, we just uh, I guess took two little kittens into our family, and um, she made the decision. She had talked about wanting a cat or a dog, and. Um, you know, because we're young and you know we move around, sometimes we're going for the weekends. I said, you know, I think cats might be a little better. They can fend for themselves. Um, she's much more the animal person. It was definitely her idea, and I just stressed her that it's not that I'm not an animal person. It's just if you get one, I'll constantly be worrying about it. You know, and so she ended up going down to the Humane Society with a friend, and I, after we talked about it, I told her why I think a cat would be better than a dog for us at this point if we had to have one of the two. Uh, she went down there and she called me on the way back and I, I knew that when she got in that environment that it, it was the, the wild card. I, I, you know, she's going to come home with something. She goes, oh, I have two members. We have two new family members. I'm like, oh, two. I thought for a second, two little dogs. And she goes, I got two kittens. And I went, she's, you know, at first and I just laughed because I thought, okay, you know what? I'm happy with the cats. Like, and she was really excited about it, and I thought to myself, well, you know, she got two instead of one. I'm like, but that was, it ended up being a great decision, and we had discussions over the names, and that was not something that I really cared so much about. They came with two crazy names, I think Beach Bum and Lifeguard.